Welcome back to the February 25th Bracketology update video and let's get right into it with our seeding updates and in the updated version we've got Gonzaga at the number one overall seed. We saw the committee top 16 rankings last week. Gonzaga came out at number one so we have updated to have them at number one. Then we've got number eight North Carolina. A lot of people might have them a bit lower but the metrics just love this team so I'm going to have to credit them. They finally got that quad one win, so they're sitting at the eighth seed here. Number nine, Loyola Chicago. It's been a solid contender in the MVC as well. Number five, UConn just snagged a massive win over Villanova. We had the betting lock in that one. We followed it all the way through. Memphis is the 12 seed. They've had a nice stretch here in the American to be on the bubble. Then we've got number four seed, Wisconsin, who is honestly one of the luckiest teams in the nation, but they keep up their winning streak in the Big Ten with the one point win the other day, and they stay at the four seed, but one trip up in this Wisconsin team could be going down. Number three seed, we've got Duke, who has also taken care of business down the stretch here in ACC play, recently defeating Virginia on the road in a tough environment. Number six seed, we've got LSU, who's playing solid in the SEC as of right now. Number 11 seed, Wake Forest, who's been trending downwards in these past couple weeks, losing close games to Miami, Duke, and then Clemson, but they did get their one win against Notre Dame in that stretch. So that is a massive win for them. It was a tough stretch, but you can't be losing at Clemson. They finish off the season with home dates against Louisville and NC State, and I think they'll win both to keep them on the right side of the bubble for the time being. Then we've got number seven seed, Iowa, who came out and smoked Michigan State on Tuesday. They are at the seven seed here. Number 10 seed, Wyoming. A few people have them a bit higher, but they're taking care of business in a tough Mountain West, and their one big game to end the season here is a home date against San Diego State. They also have a home date against Fresno State, so both of those, if they win, could bolster their resume. Number two seed, this is controversial, but I'm going with Texas Tech here. I think that their wins have been massive. They're one of the hottest teams in the nation, and they're playing like it right now. I think Texas Tech is a two seed at the moment. Then on the other side, we've got Arizona down to the number two overall seed. They haven't really done much since the last video as they beat both the Oregon schools at home. And so they look to clinch the Pac-12 regular season title in due time. Number eight seed, we've got Xavier, who's in the midst of losing five of six. They got a horrible loss at Providence in triple overtime. And this team is just falling down in the ranks right now the one thing that is helping them in my bracketology is that they are favored by most of the metrics so they stay at a number eight seed albeit one of the worst ones and then we've got michigan who's also a semi-bubble team and a lot of other projections but i like them here as they just played a great game against rutgers and i think they have a great chance in their next three games illinois at home michigan state at home and then iowa at home and then at ohio state so three out of four of those are resume building opportunities with the ranked team and then Michigan State is also a team that we'll see here later so Michigan without Jawan Howard looking fine right now number five Texas just rallied to grab a win over a TCU squad we'll see later Houston is a four seed as they continue to take care of business in the American Conference number three seed Tennessee after that massive win last week against Kentucky. The committee had Tennessee a little higher than I did, so I made some adjustments here. Of course, they did lose to Arkansas, who will we, we will see later. Number 60, we've got Murray State, and a lot of other bracketologists don't have Murray State up this high, but I don't see any reason why they can't be. They only have the two losses coming off a blowout win over Belmont, who's no longer in the bracket anymore after that. And this is just a team that is probably going to just cruise to their championship in their conference. There's no doubt that they're a lock right now as long as they don't lose three straight games against lowly competition. But this Murray State team is very good, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Number 11 seed, we've got the Aztecs, who just lost a close one against Boise State. That was an entertaining back-and-forth game. San Diego State has a couple dates, the one at Wyoming in particular, that they have to look forward to for resume-building opportunities to try and get themselves into the tournament 
more safely. Number seven seed, we've got St. Mary's, who obviously has the showdown with number one, Gonzaga, at home. Then we've got number 10 seed, Davidson, who continues to take care of business. They are the A-10 automatic qualifier as of right now. Number two seed, Purdue, also has taken care of business as of late. Their last game was that win over Rutgers. They then go on the road at Michigan State in a tight spread game, and then at 13, Wisconsin, and then their season's all but done. If they can get two out of those, I think that they will win the Big Ten regular season. Now, on to the other side of the bracket. We'll start with our third overall seed, Kansas, who's been very solid. They would play the winner of Marquette and Boise State. Boise State, obviously, as aforementioned, just got that huge win over SDSU. Number five seed, Alabama, coming off a tough loss to Kentucky over the weekend, but this is still a very solid team. Again, has played the hardest strength of schedule, so I'm not really concerned about them. Then we've got number 12 seed, Miami or Creighton. And Creighton, although they got the win a couple days ago in Big East play, I am concerned for this team as they did lose one of their big scores in Nemhard, so that could be dangerous for them going forward. As for Miami, they are hanging in the balance here as there aren't that many opportunities for big wins in the ACC. Obviously, they already have the one over Duke, but this is one of the luckier teams in the nation. They win a lot of close games. Their schedule is pretty easy down the stretch, but if they lose one of those games, they could be in deep trouble. Number four seed, we've got Providence. I had to adjust their ranking up from last week because the committee had them in the top four. They haven't lost since, but they have had two cardiac games in which... They just play so close to their competition, so I just can't see Providence continuing to do this, but if they can, you know, credit to the team that can get it done. A close win is always better than a loss, so let's move on to our three-seed Ohio State, who just nabbed a massive win over Illinois on the road. That is going to raise them up above Illinois. You see them on the other side at the four line. Number six seed, USC, stays there after two close wins against Wazoo and then Oregon State on the road. They've been shorthanded in both of those games. Number 11, SMU, continues to handle business in the American. They've got another showdown with Houston looming before that tournament that they would love to have to complete the season sweep there. Number seven seed, Iowa State, is coming off three straight wins after that brutal four-loss stretch in which put them on the bubble, but now they've successfully navigated these three games, including a very close one against West Virginia. Their remaining schedule flattens out at Kansas State, which could be a trap game, and then at Baylor to end the season. Seton Hall sits at the 10th seed after two straight wins over non-tournament teams. Their remaining schedule at Xavier and at Creighton will be the tough games there. So Seton Hall is looking good. Number two seed, Kentucky, obviously beat Alabama over the weekend. So we'll see how they are able to finish their season. They've got a tough road game against Arkansas this Saturday and another date at Florida. And then moving into the final quadrant, we've got Auburn at the number one seed. Just lost to Florida, but this is still a very good team overall resume and then we've got number eight michigan state who's just faltering down the stretch here i believe they've lost five of their last six games going from about a four seed to the eight and still falling they've got a tough game against purdue and i don't really know when the bleeding's going to stop for this team so they're in deep trouble right now then we've got a controversial number nine seed i've got north texas there a lot of people have them at the 12 13 line but while they are the automatic qualifier out of the Conference USA and obviously the best team, upsets can always happen in the conference tournament. And I think that North Texas deserves an at-large spot. They've got some great wins, haven't really lost to any horrible teams outside of a fluky game against Buffalo to start the season. Other than that, they've cleaned up in a tough Conference USA and they have a date with Louisiana Tech at home that will help to bolster their resume even more if they can seize it. Number five, we've got UCLA, who's coming off a brutal loss against Oregon. UCLA will try and patch up the wounds in their remaining games at Oregon State and then against USC at home. Number 12 seed, we've got TCU slash Indiana. TCU is amidst a brutal stretch right now. They've got three more ranked games in a row that they have to play, including two against Kansas. So it's not going to be easy or TCU by any stretch of the imagination here. And they probably have to grab one of those to keep holding on to the tournament as they are right on the bubble. Indiana grabbed a must win over Maryland last night, but they're coming off a five-game losing streak before that. 
in which they played a brutal schedule. To be quite frank, four out of five of those were ranked games. They have an easier schedule coming up at Minnesota against Rutgers at home and then at Purdue. They probably need to win at least two out of three of those games and then a little something something in the Big Ten tournament to hold on to their spot. Illinois obviously lost to Ohio State last night. Their remaining schedule at Michigan and then a home date against Penn State and then a home date against Iowa. So they've got a chance to finish strong here as I believe they will. Number three seed Villanova just lost to UConn. We'll see how they finish up their season in the Big East. Number six seed Arkansas, one of the hottest teams in the nation right now. We already addressed that they will play Kentucky, and I like Arkansas in this game. And we've got number 11 seed Notre Dame, one of the top teams in the ACC in conference play, but the lack of quality wins is making it so that Notre Dame is certainly a bubble team. They have three easy games left on their schedule and i'm afraid if they lose one they could be out of the tournament completely number seven seed colorado state continues to be dominant in the mountain west number 10 seed san francisco gave gonzaga a fight in a high scoring game but ended up on the short end of that one they've got a couple more opportunities in wcc play that are must wins before that tournament and i believe that they will be a lock for an at-large bid if not more if they can make a surprising run number two seed baylor continues to be shorthanded but the committee loved them at the number five overall seed so who am i to disagree they haven't lost since then a tough game at oklahoma state obviously a tough place to play as oklahoma state does not have postseason ambitions that they will be able to play for